Hey guys. I'm Jerry. I'm Sierra. We're ladies. And we tangent. What's, What's up, up everyone? One, one, one. <gasps> Go off. <laughs> Sorry. Whenever wow. I, I'm sick and I'm really nasally. Oh, well, I'm not sick. I'm just nasally. Yeah. I might be sick, but I'm just kind of, it's, I was yelling. Yeah. I was yelling a lot. Whenever, sometimes I get heated and our, our office has such good acoustics that I come in here and I, I would just like to yell because it sounds nicer here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And now I've done this to my voice. And so you know what? I like sometimes... to pretend that I'm a 2000s pop star. Like no, no, no. So, <laughs> sometimes just yelling into the void mm-hmm. is so helpful. That's what we call the office. The void. <laughs> We're going to the void. <laughs> no, but truly, I tried to teach. I taught Noah that trick. Mm. I was like, I fe- I see you having these yep. huge feelings. You know what you could do is go stuff your face in your pillow in your room and just scream. Just yell. And he did for like. I don't know, a good at least five minutes. And at one point, tears were coming out. And oh. he, was, he was frustrated with math. It's okay. I've been there. Hey, same. I've been there. Yep. And I was like, hey, I can see you getting really worked up about this. Take a break. Mm-hmm. Go in your room. Scream into a pillow. Yep. Get it out. Get those feelings out. I do that. Because you can't work if you're mm. feeling all of those like, you know what I mean? 100%. It just is going to pile up. 100%. So he did it. He had tears. And then he got up, wiped his tears, smile on his face. And he was like. That was actually awesome. Sometimes <laughs> that's how you know, like you've had a breakthrough, but other times that's scary. I know. <laughs> I know. You're, not, you're like, I'm not sure which one it is, but this one feels okay, maybe. Yeah. Okay. I was like, as long as you're not taking it out, because he started to get like frustrated and I could see that yeah. being taken out on other members of the family. Mm-hmm. Like he was like, well, Sawyer's just, she's yes. climbing off. Yes, you yes, know yes. what I mean? Yes. Getting like really upset. And I was like, hey. You're allowed to feel what you're feeling right now. No one else is responsible for it. (laughs) Is take it out on the two year old who's just doing two year old things. Yeah. So take that into the bedroom. (laughs) Yeah. Take it out on your pillow. (laughs) Yeah. I have started doing that with the word fuck. Oh, yeah. Fuck is a good one. Yeah. I wonder how long we are into the episode because I know if we cuss a lot at the beginning, they they (laughs) They take us. They're like, you're not you're not suitable for ads. Um, The whole episode where we like cut it up the whole thing. Like just they're like, hey, that's going to be a can't do that. (laughs) Yep. You're not getting shit for this guy. But that's how you know we're true artists. We don't (laughs) don't even care. (laughs) I will just walk away. And I don't say because I think sometimes it can almost seem like cursing that way is like you're cursing someone, but I just like the way it sounds in my mouth. And so I'll just be like, fuck, 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 fuck. Good. And then I feel better because then I sound silly. Yes. And then I laugh. (laughs) I like that. Mm -hmm. That's good. The first first few times that I started doing it, I had to like make it known to Shane as I was walking past him doing it. I was like, this is, this is not for, this just feels good. This is not for or and- towards anyone, just so you're aware. And so after I told him that, anytime he sees me doing it, he's just like, oh, there she goes, calming down again. <laughs> oh, look at her. Regulating. <laughs> yeah, regulators. Mount up. All right, here's the thing, what we have to tell you about. We're going on tour. <laughs> I know We're you've heard going it. on tour. We're never going to stop talking about it until it's over because it's an exciting thing. And uh-huh. also, Florida. <laughs> actually, how are you doing, Florida? No, we're actually very concerned. Yeah. Weren't they having some weather? I think they're having some we weather. We also have been having some weather here in Ohio. And I feel like everywhere in between has also had a little bit of something. We got snowstorms, but I've seen like tornadoes in Florida. Really? And I don't think that's normal. Yeah. I don't I've think seen, that's like, normal either. Multiple on my For You page of like tornadoes happening. Interesting. I Interesting. Know. I heard there was a big sickness going through of bitchitis. What the <laughs> fuck is wrong with you? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. We do have news, though, for you. If you do want to go to the Florida show, this is huge. This is very big. Yep. Huge. Couldn't be bigger. (laughs) Very big. The bigliest news. Okay. (laughs) Ew. And that news is that the show is now 18 plus. I the I don't know if it's both of them or just Orlando. Say, hang on, we we might have to Tampa will double check with you, but we know yes. Orlando. Orlando for sure has agreed to make the show 18 plus. We, so We've told you this before. Unfortunately, it's not us. When you go to look and you book a ticket and it says 21 plus, that is because of yeah. the venue. Yeah, it's not you uh, it's and not it's us. not me. <laughs> it's it's them. them. Um but we have been working with, honestly, not just those two. We've tried with yeah. multiple, but Florida is, at least Orlando, Orlando, has caved 
We've bullied them. Yeah, I was just, just like, saying, bully you. if you you are not special, <laughs> if you think that you're the only ones being bullied by us, no, nope, we're doing. We it stay to them too. bullying venues to let underage children in their <laughs> shows <laughs> so, so that we can cuss, cuss at them. <laughs> no, so. but truly, it is going to be a good time. I think it is it 18 plus now. So it is, so sorry. but. When I tell you guys, Sierra and I had like a huge breakthrough. Let me tell you a little bit of something, okay? We filmed ourselves, okay? Camp Tangents, okay? We filmed ourselves camping. There was so, I said this to Mommy Maggie today. Mm. I said there was so much good content. I didn't know how to like combine it. I thought I was gonna like, it was going to be more difficult than it was. And I said, turns out we're just funny yeah. all the time. So now I don't know how to prioritize what are the best parts. Yeah. But Sierra and I had a moment of clarity mm -hmm. and the pieces that we've put together and the mm -hmm. way that they're being strung together. When I tell you every time I watch them, I laugh. Yes, every so time good. I watch them, I laugh. But I also oh, you're talking something. a big game. <laughs> I am. I am talking a big game because like I'm fucking I want to back this. It's yeah. not just like come see us on tour. We'll see what the fuck happens. I'm really I'm really no, proud we're like of it. Not a show. We're I'm putting really on a show fucking for proud you. of it. And so, like, I'm excited now that I feel confident in what we're doing because there was a time where I was like, I know oh, this could be ass. I don't know. <laughs> I know we're gonna pull it out. Yeah, because pull out game strong. <laughs> but so I, I know about us. But I don't. I can't say for certain how we're gonna go about pulling it out. That's but true. now I feel confident because I know exactly where where we're putting it and pulling it. And, and bop at it. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Anyway, uh, just you got to see it. You do. You do. And also what you have to see, um, because we have a little bit for we're going to record two episodes. Obviously, one is for our Patreon. Yes. Uh, princesses. <laughs> Prince and princesses at the end of this. Uh, or after our principals. <laughs> yeah, our principals. <laughs> and so. I asked them to ask us questions that we could answer. And oh, some were yeah, like yeah. a Hey Ladies post, but I I opened it up to like yeah. Q&A. And when I tell you so many are tour questionies. So if you are someone who also has those, you can go like about Fun. us on tour. Yes, 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 like yes. That. We will be answering them. So that is patreon.com slash ladies and tangents. Mm -hmm. Also, I'm just going to like give us a little bit of props here. Our Patreon's pretty fucking dope. Popping because off. if you go there now... The backlog of episodes you will have is crazy. Is crazy. It's so if crazy. you're like, damn, I, I'm finished binging you guys and now I have nothing. There's so many episodes. There's got to the be, there's got to be like 50 plus. Uh, easy. Easy. And if you're in the, if you're in the $10 tier, you get access to all of them. Yes. So, and we post them every other Friday. Right. Right. Or at least yeah. two Fridays yeah. a month. Yep. Two Fridays a month. And we are going to be doing more lives on Patreon. Mm -hmm. We're gonna, we got we have some fun things scheduled for Patreon. Scheduled for Patreon that we're but that we're working. We're very excited. You know what this whole part of the show so far has felt like? Huh. That part um in church where they pass around the basket. <laughs> and they're, they're like, <laughs> Come on, thank give you the <laughs> Lord some money. Hey, thank you guys for coming. And while you're here, pull out your wallets. <laughs> And find a buckaroo for <laughs> Jesus himself. <laughs> yeah. 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 So anyway. This is your tithe. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. That's what they call it, I think. That is what they call it. I haven't been to church in a long time, yeah. I'll be honest. I always felt weird. <laughs> anyway. Anyway. Because <laughs> you didn't have any money or what? Yes. That was me. I was always like, I'm broke. Well, well they told me that I was supposed to do like 10% of my income. And I was like, that's a lot. That is. That's a lot when I don't have any. <laughs> like, what the fuck? I know. Yeah. And so I was like, well, no wonder I'm not getting any blessings. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, 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 hard, I'm not paying for shit. <laughs> not a thing. <laughs> I was like, I hope a 20 will do like whenever I go yeah. once a month, maybe. <laughs> it's a year. But, yeah. I actually think I'm still paying a church $20 a month because I signed it up with my debit card. A word? <laughs> I think. Unless that debit card is one of the ones that I accidentally um, fell for a scam with. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Then because I did again. I like to just, uh, for good measure, cancel mm -hmm. and renew <laughs> debit cards every couple years because I know I have so many things I accidentally yeah. subscribe to yeah. that I can't remember. It's like when you remember that your toothbrush has been <laughs> your toothbrush for too long and you're like, I should probably get a new one or just like how a new long, head for that. Yeah. How long is this? Like the bristles are all fucking <laughs> Yeah. That can't be good for anyone's I mouth. I have to like kind of scrape the excess. <laughs> 
<laughs> dried <laughs> toothpaste off of it. Maybe I should just get a new one. <laughs> yeah. 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 Anyway. Uh, well, do we have a treat for you? <laughs> and by a treat, I mean... It's time. It's time to get serious. Thank you all everybody. for getting through the beginning part. Now it is time for the content. It's time to get serious. Um, <laughs> we're taking you to church. Take no, me we're to not. church. Yes, we like a dog. <laughs> I really like how you're turning this into a musical. Well, I don't think I'm gonna like how it's gonna go. So I'm trying to. <laughs> I'm I'm doing the whole. The cunt thing. Yeah, yeah, Where yeah. I create yeah. a little bit of a... Well, this is another one of those episodes where it might give you a... Here's what I'm going to tell you mm-hmm. about what we're about to talk about. Mm-hmm. Jerry offered up a... Like a compilation of YouTube videos yes. that she watched. And it's like... Multiple years ago. Look at this and tell me, should we talk about it? And I was like, yes. I saw one of the words which said like family systems. Uh-huh. I Googled it. I read a bunch of articles. I was like, I love this. Let's do something yep. on this. Turns out wasn't the same thing. No. So then I watched yours and I was like, that is different. I'm not going to do yours. <laughs> I apologize. No. But we are going to in the future. I was going to say I'm good because I've already watched those videos. Yes. So now yeah, I yeah. don't know what you're going to tell me. So what I ended up finding is a, uh, basically a theory in psychology. Mm-hmm. So all my psychology students, people <laughs> that have probably taken a psychology course, yeah. maybe you know. Um, but this is basically, I believe oh my it's God, called- I'm so sorry. Yeah, I was trying to do the principals thing, but with psychology and I just did my psychopals and I was like, that's not- <laughs> You guys, my psychopath. Oh, that doesn't work as well. <laughs> Sorry. So this is called the Bowen Family Systems Theory. This sounds like a, a family who was on TLC and now they like don't speak to each other. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's not based <laughs> off a family system. It's like Kate Bowen, plus eight. <laughs> Bowen was a uh, a psychiatrist, Dr. Murray Bowen. Murray. Okay. I know. I love him purely based on the name. He seems fuzzy. You know what? I get that. You know what I mean? I get that. Murray Bowen has hair that looks like Dee Dee Pickles and a mustache and like really <laughs> tiny glasses. <laughs> yeah. Now that you guys have that very accurate visual, let's hear what he has to say. Yeah. Well, here's the deal. I'm not going to, I'm more so going off of an article, of course, that I found right. on Psychology Today because mm-hmm. I love that site. And uh, this is written by Eileen Strauss Cohen, PhD. And reviewed by Michelle Quirk. Okay. Okay. So I just felt like this was, there's. He doesn't look like that, by the way. I'm sorry. Go ahead. (laughs) He looked at me. He looked at me. Show me. (laughs) He just looks like an old man. He just looks like an old man. He's just an old man. Oh, he kind of looks like Albert Einstein a little bit. Minus the hair. Yeah. Yeah, he honestly looks like the guy who asked you to pass the basket. Yeah, <laughs> church, yeah, 100%. Okay. Okay, so here's the deal. Basically, uh, so the system itself had like eight parts. Uh-huh. I'm not going to do that. Okay. It's a lot. Yeah. And so basically what this is, is it kind of smushes it all together. Got it. And gives you like, this is how it's portrayed negatively. This is a healthy way kind of to do it. Cliff notes. Yes. Yes. And that's what we need. And that's what we love. So yeah. Murray I, Bone for dummies. <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> pretty much. So here's my disclaimer. I'm not a psychologist. I'm not a psychiatrist. I'm barely a person. <laughs> She's a psychopal. <laughs> I am a psychopal. And I didn't really go to college for more than a year. Like each time that I tried. <laughs> Collectively. <laughs> I might have three years under my belt, but they were all like... Ten years apart. Yeah. Anyways, five maybe. Okay, who's counting? It doesn't matter. <laughs> but uh, so a lot of this might be like a verbatim thing, but it is more so for the discussion of it. Yes. I'm not presenting this to you as if it's my knowledge. This is all to Eileen. Eileen, thank you so much. Mm. We're just going to talk about what you wrote, and and I think that it's important because if some of you didn't look this up or didn't know about it, here you go. Again, it's very much like. Um, Depression versus uh, burnout. burnout. Yeah, a hundred percent. Like what we did with that, but Sierra's more prepared than I was that day. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> okay, so basically, here's the deal: that the Bowen family systems theory offers profound insights into the dynamics of family relationships and how they shape our lives as individuals. Mm. So essentially, what this means it up because i use that then to get on the patreon to look for questions for later honestly i'm so sorry because i feel like i jinxed you because i said you're more prepared than i was the other day <laughs> i 
was. But no, then I, I just fucking lost this one part that I wanted to say. I think that Here people don't realize how much a family system and the dynamics of the household that they came from impacts how they perceive the world and engage with the world. So here's here's what it says. Basically, Dr. Murray, he formulated the theory by using systems to integrate knowledge of the human as a product of evolution with the knowledge from family research. Basically merging the two, saying that like Murray merger. <laughs> merger. Old merge and Murray. <laughs> yes. So an assumption is that an emotional system that evolved over several billion years governs human relationships. Oh, systems. okay. Do you know what I'm saying? Yes, How yes, it's yes. all connected. Yes. So basically, people have a quote, thinking brain language, a complex psychology and culture, but they still do all the ordinary things that other forms of life does. Right. right. The emotional system affects most human activity and is the principal driving force in the development of clinical problems. Okay. Knowledge of how the emotional system operates in one's family, work, and social systems offers new, more effective options for solving problems in these areas. So basically what it's saying is like if you spend a lot of time with a system, we're going to mostly talk about your family, which is basically just like a group of people. Yes. When you're living in a household with people, whether you think you were close to your family or not, just living in that same household, growing up with those people, you basically live under the same like emotional skin, if that makes sense. And so everything that happens has an effect on you, whether you knew it or not. Yes. The other people, how they lived their lives, what happened to them had an effect on you. Yes. And now will affect your family, Mm -hmm. which I mean, you kind of know, but like, it's one of those things where it's like, duh. Yeah. But but also not duh. Exactly. Like cheerleaders leading cheers. (laughs) Yes. If you don't take a second to think about why a bus stop, it's called a bus stop. You don't realize, oh, that's where the the bus bus stops. stops. That makes sense. Exactly. Okay. So basically this is The whole thing is that it's the nature of a family that its members are intensely connected emotionally. Often people feel distant or disconnected from their families, but this is more feeling than fact. Mm, mm -hmm. Okay. So families so profoundly, and this is a fact, that families so profoundly affect their members' thoughts, feelings, and actions that it often seems as if people... This is the emotional skin part. That's why I said that. Living under the same emotional skin. People solicit each other's attention, approval, and support, and they react to each other's needs, expectations, and upsets, whether or not they're consciously doing it. Mm -hmm. This connectedness and reactivity makes the functioning of family members interdependent. And that makes me feel yucky. Uh Mm Uh-huh. Because... You think about people who you don't have that kind of a closeness with and you don't feel that same need for approval or you don't worry about their needs in the same way. And so I think that's why creating boundaries can be so difficult because you are... Oh, we're going to talk about that. You are one. Yeah. Oh, we're going to talk it's, about that. It's like, so if you're not that, then you're nothing and that... Then I don't have a family. And yes. so it's like a loss of self, a loss of identity. And it's, that would make me spiral into the ground. Yeah. So what this says is a change in one person's functioning is predictably followed by reciprocal changes then in the functioning of all the others around them. Families differ somewhat in their degree of interdependence, but it is always present to some degree. Oh, I, for sure. It's crazy. This emotional interdependence presumably evolved to promote the cohesiveness and cooperations families require Mm -hmm. to protect, shelter, and feed their members. Yeah, just keep the household running as a in a quote-unquote functional way. So because of that, you have biologically heightened emotions and and connectedness. Yes! That you wouldn't have with other people. You were able to read body language better. <laughs> Bitch, when I tell... Things- let me tell you something. I'm interrupting you. No, let me ahead, fucking tell ahead, you this, ahead. okay? So I just said this to my dad the other day mm-hmm. because uh, he was like, hey, I'm, I want to have a conversation with your sister. And I was like, okay, go for it. And he's like, but I want to be the one to have the conversation. And I was like, and I think you should. Yeah. I want no part. 
of <laughs> of being in in that conversation. Yeah. And he is like, are you sure? That's your sister. I know you guys talk. And I was like, dad, I respect you. This is nothing. This is not, you want to talk? You talk then. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to say anything. Yeah. And then I'm around my sister. <laughs> and guess what? I didn't say anything. Yeah. I didn't say anything. Yeah. But she looked at me and it was like she read my mind. She's like, something's going on. And started speaking as if I had just ended a sentence. (laughs) Like she was continuing a conversation that had never started. And I just looked at her and I go, I didn't say anything. And she was like, you You didn't didn't have have to. to. (laughs) And I was like, what? And so I... I talked to my dad and I was like, hey, bestie girl, I just want to let you know that (laughs) I didn't I didn't say anything. It is important to me and my integrity that you know that I was true to my word and I would I'm not trying to gaslight you, but I'm going to gaslight you here and and say to you (laughs) that. Our family system. The first language of our household was body language. Yes. And so. We are able to communicate that way, communicate and read movements, subtle face changes Mm -hmm. so much so that I can do it with people who weren't in the Mm -hmm. household. Yeah. But the people who were in the household, girl, it's like you're it's like they're speaking without speaking. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And it's bizarre. And it's not just me and my sister. My dad and my sister have done it before. My mom has done it before. It's like we all have this ability to look at each other and be like, I know exactly everything that's happening in your head. And (laughs) whether we want to believe that's woo woo or not, like, okay, we're witches. Sure. Maybe there is some truth to that. Yeah. But it also could be biology. It's also biology. So, okay, this says when family members get anxious, that anxiety can escalate by spreading infectiously among the household. Yeah. Okay. As anxiety goes up, the emotional connectedness of family members becomes more stressful than it is comforting. Eventually, one or more members can feel overwhelmed, isolated, or out of control. These members are the people who accommodate the most to reduce tension in others. Mm -hmm. What does that sound like? You and I? <laughs> Holy fuck. <laughs> Every time I was reading this, I was like, call out the oldest siblings or the oldest Dude, children. Dude, yes. Lord, Jesus. We, trying to be the problem solver, the peacemaker. Yeah. Because honestly, I was the one getting the most sick. And that's why my fucking heart keeps going all over the place. And I need to go to the hospital about it. Because I, I don't know how to manage my anxiety. Because in my family system, it was all about shove it down, shove it down, shove it down. You have to be the one to like... Mm-hmm. make everything better because mm-hmm. if not these people are going to go out of control and in mine they have big emotions and you have to be the one to sh- and in. mine it was what happens here stays here mm. and out of respect for our family th- what goes on needs to stay between our family and in this house yeah. it is no one else's business and to a degree that is true mm. however in the way that it manifested for me, it was basically, you better pretend that this house isn't the way this house is. Right. You're going to go out in it, into the world and you're going to be, it's, it, you're going to look more functional than you feel. Yeah, you're going yeah, yeah. to just put on a mask. You're going to be more accomplished than expected mm-hmm. coming from what you're coming from. Right. And, um, I'm going to be very interested to hear this back when I'm editing it because I am <laughs> there's I was just talking in therapy about how um mind you I spent my entire therapy session on the floor. Mm. I was on the floor just staring at the ceiling being like, "Kay, I have some shit to say." Um and normally I'm not like that. <laughs> and uh I was saying that like I it's very important to me when talking on the podcast that I don't weaponize our audience, weaponize our platform. um, And uh, that I always remember that anytime we're speaking about situations like this close to us, that the people who we are including in these stories, whether outright or not, they don't have the same opportunity Mm -hmm. to give their perspective or defend themselves if they feel as if they're being portrayed in a negative light. So I am speaking from my experience Mm -hmm. and 
my experience alone. My truth is my truth. Um, And something that Kay said to me was, sometimes it's hard for people to hear your truth if they're not ready to speak theirs. And I I sat up for that part. I go, what did you just say to me? <laughs> Excuse me, Kay. Say that one more time. You better, you better say it again. <laughs> and I said, I never thought of it that way. Yeah. I always understood that people had different perceptions of things and that there was, a, there was an infinite realities that lived in the minds of every single person. Mm-hmm. But I didn't realize that my truth is the truth. But if someone is not ready to speak their truth truthfully Mm -hmm. they're not ready to confront what needs to be confronted and Mm -hmm. so what they're saying is the version of reality that makes them the most comfortable yep when they're not ready to change Mm -hmm. um Mm -hmm. that it's going to be very difficult for you who for someone who is speaking their truth and is confronting those things to connect with those people yeah. I don't know if that made any sense or if I was just talking in circles, but basically all that to say if this is just our experience and leave it at that. This is not us being like we're going to shit talk our shitty families no, for an and hour. No, tr- and truly it's just like uh, here's one of the things that I will say spoiler alert. Um a part of this is multi-generational. Yes. So it is okay also to acknowledge that that might have been the way that it was because that's how it was for them. And I can fully, yeah, yes. There's a lyric. In, I'm wearing my Noah Khan sweatshirt right now. Fucking There's a lyric. One of my favorite lyrics In of all Growing time. Sideways that says, I'm still angry at my parents for what, what their, their parents, parents did, did to them. them. But it's a start. And but it's, it's like, start. it is, yes, I'm mad, but I'm still going to acknowledge that hurt people hurt people. And I know this came from somewhere and people don't set out to be bad Mm -hmm. at their jobs whether that job is uh, an actual physical job you go to or a a job that you have to assume based on your position in your family system or whatever like you don't set out to be a a bad version of that and you don't know what you don't know you don't know until after it's done whether you would have done something different and here's what i'll say i said it when we did the last one where i was like hey if you're feeling called out i implore you to not get defensive because yep. I- i'm not saying you're bad i'm not saying you're shame you should be shameful yeah. if you admit you did these things because there will be multiple times in here where you will hear me admit that that's who i was in the family system in a negative way yeah so i think it's i'm sure just i will a too human <laughs> yeah it's just a human like we're gonna make mistakes that's right. okay this is just a moment to reflect and be like maybe for the future now i know Now I know more. Now I know better. That's why we do these episodes. And it's important to be able to look at yourself. That's a part of owning your truth. It sure is. It sure is. And telling your truth truthfully. Yes. (laughs) You truth truthers. (laughs) (laughs) Truth doesn't feel like a real word. (laughs) Truthless. Truthless. Okay. So those members who accommodate to reduce tension, that's obviously a reciprocal interaction they're doing that because yeah. of the emotions and the reactions and anxieties too, of other i wonder too if some people feel that they were that but other people didn't view them as that yeah I'm, i'd be curious you know what i mean yeah um okay so for example this could be a person taking too much responsibility for the distress of others in relation to their unrealistic expectations of them okay or a person that gives up too much control of their thinking and decision making in relationship to others anxiously telling them what to do. Do you know uh-huh. what I'm saying? Yes, like abandon yourself. Because these people need me to be something. Yes. Can't relate to that. Right. I don't know what that's The about. one who does the most accommodating will literally quote, absorb the system's anxiety and thus is the family member who is most vulnerable to problems such as depression, alcoholism, affairs, or physical illness. This is all just written. I'm reading that verbatim. So that's good. (laughs) That's a little bit of the introduction. Yeah. And why maybe I get so fiercely protective of us, but also I feel like a lot of people who are our listeners are that person yes and i feel like that's why they connect with us and with this podcast so yeah. much which is why when i read that it fucking oh yeah my eyes were really welling yeah got but me. i'm wearing sierra's brow 
my brow scare her brow scare on my eyes and i don't know what's gonna happen if it starts running (laughs) Um, that's true i can't promise that's waterproof yeah i i bet it's not but uh yeah that that checks out and what's what's the reason i think i got so emotional hearing that is because i spent so much time denying that fact because mm-hmm. I viewed myself as the strongest, the one with yeah. the least amount of problems, the one who was the most um, well adjusted. I got and, it and, together. And that was reinforced. That mm-hmm. was reinforced. Like, I don't have to worry about you. Yeah. I don't have to worry about you. You're fine. Yeah. You've got it. I know that you're always going to be okay. I don't have to worry about yeah, that. And so then it you made were me internalizing all of those problems mm-hmm. because everyone else around you had, quote, bigger problems that right. you had to essentially cater to and absorb Mm -hmm. their issues more i gotta put my shit to the side put my shit to the side put my shit to the side and then it's like okay well that is gonna pile up and explode eventually yeah and then what Mm -hmm. now you're all fucking looking at me sideways like sierra i didn't know you were depressed you're always so happy (laughs) what jerry why are you such a bitch all the time (laughs) well i have been just constantly being the person who is trying to like navigate this in a way that's like, hold on, guys, I can fix this. I can mm-hmm. fix you. And I know I can fix you. And I could try to fix him. And I could try yep. to fix her. And it's okay. And I will solve this for you all. And I know that wasn't on me. But also, no one else was doing it. Right. And I, I think that I watched something today that said that until the age of seven, children their mere neurons are like the most active and so they are absorbing things and learning things just by um observing or subconsciously absorbing it and so even if someone isn't saying those things outright Mm -hmm. you just feel the vibes and you just notice what's going on and so you're like okay if there's a problem yo i'll solve it (laughs) really open as soon as you said if there's a problem i was like you You better better. um but you feel like okay you you learn about problems and how there has to be a solution and then if someone is like well hey have you tried to figure this out yourself hey you're the oldest Mm -hmm. you should teach them Mm -hmm. you should hey you should show them the example set an example you should know better Mm -hmm. and so when those are the phrases you're less than two years older than them (laughs) it it, those are the lessons not a baby anymore when they were born this you're going to internalize that and believe I should know better. Mm -hmm. I should set the example. I should do these things. Remember, we don't do should. No. We're not supposed to do should. Don't should yourself. (laughs) But when you are young and the adults in your life are... Also young? And also don't fully have an understanding of how that works and the impact that that's going to have. Because I'm going to cut you off. But I want to read something to you guys. So I saw someone share a comment today um, about gentle parenting. Okay. Mm. And I think, I think that a lot of people don't fully understand what gentle parenting is. Um, They just think it's people like being passive towards children and letting them walk all over Mm. them, Um, making them soft. (laughs) Yeah. Right. (laughs) Or whatever. But the comment you can be a gentle parent and also still discipline and have structure for your child. Those right. are actually very core things in parenting that you should do. Right. Children need it. So the comment in response to it was I was hard on my kids because the world will be hard on them. I feel sorry for these children being gentle parented. They are setting them up for a gentle world that doesn't exist. Interesting. This was my response to it. The world is not something you enter. It's not a decathlon you have to train for, though many with a more authoritarian parenting style believe that it is. The world is something you perceive through the filter created and reinforced for you in your developmental years. The goal is not to change the world to cater to the person, but rather, despite the infinite perceptions and projections in the world, prepare our children with a strong enough sense of self that they aren't discouraged or defeated when confronted and challenged by these different perspectives. Mm. The goal is not to train for one ambiguous challenge of adulthood in the real world. 
It's to develop the skills it takes not to lose sight of yourself when the real world reflects conflicting images back to you. It's not about making the stresses of the world easier for them. It's about making sure they can be easy on themselves in the inevitable hard times. Boom. That part. And that part. When you don't have someone helping you learn who you are Mm -hmm. and the importance of your sense of self at that young age, Mm -hmm. and you believe that all I am is here to set an example and serve others, that is what you will continue to do for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. And if anyone reflects something different back to you than that, you will feel shame. Mm -hmm. You will feel guilt. You will feel like an absolute fucking failure. Failure. Until you figure out who Who you you really are. are, and it doesn't matter what any other mirror reflects back to you. Yep. Not to mention, we're going to go into these a little bit more, but you will see that most of these um, are very much the parent. It's not, I mean, it is how the parent parents, but it is also just how the parent deals with their own emotions. So if you were, are still that unhealed, if you're not gentle with yourself. Yes. And you don't know how to handle your own emotions because you were never taught or you were told that emotions were silly, fuck yeah. them, then that isn't going to work well in the family system. Yes. And we'll talk about that. Okay. So. We have a lot of feelings. We do. We, we do have so many feelings. <laughs> so this is straight from the Psychology Today article. Again, I'm jumping back to that. It says, in this post, I explain the core tenets of Bowen's theory and I discover how it can transform and enrich our connections in our systems. The number one is emotional fusion and differentiation, okay? So emotional fusion refers to a state in which individual individuals, excuse me. That's like saying the pledge. I fucking, there's so many words in that. Individuals. <laughs> the wording was individuals become enmeshed. And I was like, that's a lot hey, of bars. <laughs> Honestly, I love it. Uh, become enmeshed with the emotions and needs of others, which leads to an unhealthy blurring of boundaries and a loss of individuality. Yes. So on the other hand, you have differentiation, which is maintaining a sense of self while still remaining connected to others. We've talked about it. Codependency. Yeah. Not a healthy way to have relationships with people. It's not good for you and yourself. You have to have a very strong sense of self to start fostering those relationships with other people and again well if you do develop healthily a strong sense of self which i truly believe that i have Mm -hmm. i think when other people are now faced with your strong sense of self when maybe that was not the person that they first developed a relationship with oh 100 percent. whether you were a child or an adult it can be jarring yes and it feels like now you're you're leaving me behind yes or you're you're not who i And I'll tell you, as somebody who is trying to figure out how to differentiate, I guess, in different systems and and kind of limit my enmeshment, it's very hard because to me, it also feels like I am abandoning people or I'm like isolating myself. I don't, I do not know how to do it. And that was another thing that Kay and I tried to focus on yesterday is just like the fluidity of boundaries and trying to find the the middle of it. A hundred percent. It's difficult. Mm -hmm. It's not easy. That's why when we're saying this, I'm not sitting up here like, just do it. (laughs) I understand. It is very difficult. And And I I actually don't know how. (laughs) We both are struggling with. That's what I want you to know. Yeah. Um, By developing emotional differentiation, individuals can then better manage their own emotions, communicate more effectively, and make in independent decisions which will in turn foster healthier and more authentic relationships an example of emotional fusion might be when a parent this called me out so hard are you ready for this (laughs) shit this is why i'm saying it's i am not like somebody who's like i do this all the time no i'm very much still i'm getting better at this whenever a parent who feels anxious anytime their child is upset the parent's mood is closely tied to their child's emotion. Makes sense. That's a biology thing as well. However, now it makes it difficult for them to maintain their own selves, 
a sense of common rationality when their child is in this distressed state. Mm -hmm. Because of that, their worry might compel them to rush in and solve the child's problem rather than allowing them to develop resilience. Resilience? I want to do a whole fucking Mm -hmm. episode on resilience sometimes because I don't think people understand how important resilience is. Mm -hmm. And If it wasn't for resilience, I would not be here Mm -hmm. because that is literally the only thing that got me through really traumatic shit. And you can foster you can and, and you strengthen can, your own resilience. You can do it in a healthy way too, because exactly. I think people believe that resilience is just telling a kid to get up when he's no when he fell. You know what no, I mean? No, 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 no. Like yeah. that's uh, when I was reading the book, "What Happened to You." That was one of the focus. Is like a traumatic experience for one could be a re- resilience building opportunity for another, and so. Um, that was something that I was talking a lot with Barbara with, but then also Kay is like, my children, seems like clockwork at the age of three, struggle desperately when I leave. Mm -hmm. And there is such an immense guilt that I have. Mm -hmm. And I want to rescue them from that feeling. And I, and I want to- Mom, you'll just be here all the time then. Yes. I don't, I want them to not have to experience hurt and pain, but that's just not realistic. And the, you can't be there all the time. I can't. And, and it it's will, important it for them. It will make them feel like a codependency thing. Yes. If you are, if you always do rush back, yes. they, they, need, they need to foster the problem solving skills and the independence there. Yes. It's important. And it's also important for them to see me do these things. It's yes. important to see me work. It's important for them to have that opportunity to miss me and for me to come home. And so there is a healthy way to do it. 100%. And it's just about figuring that out. Again, it's just finding the middle. In a bit, in a middle. <laughs> exactly. So developing emotional, and and again, I was this person with Noah. I feel like I would never say this to him now because he is doing phenomenally, but I feel like I did this to him too much. Being a single mom, I felt like I didn't ever want him to feel hurt and pain in the world. And so I was a helicopter mom to the T, whereas like, I think you need to also give yourself the acknowledgement that there was a lot of fear that if he was. was if he was appearing to have emotions or something wrong, that there was a fear for you that then he would be taken. So that it's it's not true. just that you that is were very true, and that was an actual like real thing that yes. I was worried would happen. Right. So I don't want you to be like I'm just a helicopter mom. And I didn't know how to. <laughs> no. There was there was other there was there was, and that's what we want you to acknowledge. Yes. Listening, we understand. I don't want to call them excuses, but I do understand there are circumstances, circumstances, great word. That's what I was looking for. Um, at the same time, you do have to understand that those there, there is still potentially an effect there. So as hard as it might be, I started letting him navigate the world kind of by himself. And there were times where he would look at me like, hello, why aren't you helping yeah. me? God, it, 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 here's a small one cleaning his room. OK, <laughs> I remember, and, dude. It was like, I would just do it for him every single time. I'd be like, I'll just do it for you because you are, I understand you have ADHD. And so that was my whole thing is it's hard for him. He has ADHD. Mm -hmm. It's really hard. I understand. I don't like cleaning either. I'll Mm -hmm. just do it. That isn't going to help him. Tell me if I'm wrong. When he goes out into the real world. Because I feel like it was about the time that Ollie started helping me with the dishes. Yes. (laughs) That you were like, wait a minute. Hang on. How old is he? (laughs) Yeah. Because Noah's seven and I'm still like having to do yeah his whole room for him and again i didn't have to do it right but he would just like he would be almost devastated now he has done he does his room now Mm -hmm. here's what i had to do i said listen you're gonna have to do your room you're gonna have to learn how to clean a house which he does he just chores now amazingly yeah here's how but he didn't right right away and that's where structure and just like that being able to tell your kids no, yep. do it in a way that's not being a dick to them. Find a way that works for you. Yes. Um, so we started doing that. But also I understand for him that ADHD makes it more difficult. So we would turn it into like, let's break this down into little tasks. Yep. And you can, ha- you want to put on music? Put on a playlist. Let's yep. make a playlist. We'll make a playlist together, but you will go in your room. <laughs> you will turn your playlist on because yep. I know that makes it easier for me to clean. And you will do these tasks, at least the first three. If you need a break after that, a mental break, come out, get a snack, fine. A break. But then you will go back in and you have to do this. Mm-hmm. It's got to be done by tonight. Right. However you want to go about doing it, fine. And now guess what? He does it great. It's not even a problem. But it was something that I struggled with 
Um, and it, I felt like almost a failure because of it, but it's not. It's no. just, I understand that for me, it, it was born out of a place of, I didn't want him to feel sadness and hurt. Mm-hmm. And it was just like, uh, okay, it'll be easier if I do it. See, I was almost too far in the opposite direction where I was like, okay, if you don't want to clean this up, then you're going to deal with the consequences of this not being cleaned up. And then Ollie became really good at walking on Legos. Yeah. Like it was almost like watching someone walk. calluses. <laughs> Truly. I was like, I couldn't walk into his room because the entire floor was Legos. And he was like, hold on, mom, I want you to read me a book. And he's just stepping on them, not even flinching. And I'm like, that is terrifying. I created a monster. That's terrifying. Because it was almost like, I don't know that he's going to care about this. Like he's, the, I don't think the natural consequences well, no, are I going to are, like. Kids don't care the way that I think adults do about like messes. Now, now sometimes he will get to a point where he's like, okay, I'd like to clean this. Or now he's starting to like, I do like my books a certain way. So he's getting there, but it definitely wasn't how I thought it was going to be. And so like, (laughs) I almost had too little structure to where I, I, I made a monster. (laughs) So, (laughs) Uh, okay. So developing emotional differentiation in this scenario would involve the parent recognizing and respecting the distinction between their own emotions and their children's. Okay, think about this. This is what I thought when I read this. It's very similar to if you're on an airplane and it starts to go down and the masks fall. Mm-hmm. As much as you might want to immediately put that mask on your baby, yep. that's not going to help if your baby's got an ox- oxygen mask on and then you're passed out in the seat next to yes. them. You have to help yourself first mm-hmm. before you can help that child. So I also feel like this would be a situation, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, where in a family system, one person is having big feelings, is pissed about something, and nobody else is mad, mm-hmm. but the person ends up getting more angry because no one else is mad. Oh, prob- I'm sure. You know what I mean? Yeah, Where it's yeah. like, I have this feeling, so you should also have this feeling. And it actually is making me more angry that I'm witnessing you not, not- match my feeling. I Yeah. I when think it's that like, definitely but that has, has nothing to do to- with the fusion because it's like, hey, our, we're supposed to be so interconnected that you should feel this way with me and it's like those are your feelings though yeah why why do i have to feel this way well because if you don't it's disrespectful to me and you obviously don't care about me then mm-hmm, mm-hmm. i see uh, yeah 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 i would go into that further but we'll i'll say that <laughs> for after the podcast but i feel that <laughs> They might acknowledge their anxiety while also understanding that it is their child who is upset and not them. And by managing their own emotional response, the parent can remain calm and supportive, allowing the child to then navigate their feelings. Because guess what? Tantrums, sadness, anger, all of those things are important for children to feel. Yes. They should feel those. Yes. That's okay. You Mm -hmm. being able to be a supportive parent, though, and be like, Hey, that's the whole me and Noah. Instead of being like, Noah, will you settle down and not, Mm -hmm. I don't know, um, be angry? It's just math or whatever would Mm -hmm. have probably been said to me. Yep. It's not that serious. It's math. Shut up and do your homework or Mm -hmm. whatever. Yep. I'm not saying that was directly what was said to me. I'm just saying I've heard that from maybe TV. I don't know. Anyway. (laughs) (laughs) But me being like, (laughs) hey. I can see that you're angry right now. And that's not an easy uh, Feeling emotion to, to navigate, but it is a normal emotion. But I think if you did it in a healthy mm-hmm. way, yep. just got it out, that you would be able to come back here and focus more because that's really clouding yes. your focus. Forest is in, this is the thing, like when people are like, oh, terrible twos, oh, three major, all of those like labels, you completely, by doing that, like I know they're cutesy, but you completely invalidate the emotions that they're going through in for two years. Oh my God, that they're feeling so many things. Because think in about really it. huge way. Yeah. Think about it. If you if if you lose something that's super meaningful to you, like let's say your wedding ring or your car, like just a, like a person. Yeah. The the absolute pain and emotion that you feel from that, mm-hmm. a child could feel by losing a toy. Yeah. 
Yeah. And so when they have that big emotion, you're like, it's a fucking toy. Relax. It's not, not helpful. It's <laughs> not to them. It's yeah. not though. Yeah. And so you don't get to decide the, the level of importance to things for that person. Now, Forrest, for example, or maybe a kid I saw on TV, <laughs> he, when he's upset, he throws things. Yeah. And he doesn't care what it is. Mm-hmm. And he doesn't care who's in the line of fire. And it's bad. Yeah. Do I think that it is worse than any other kid? Not necessarily. I think all kids kind of fall into different categories of how they express the really big feelings. Like some kids smack their heads on the floor. Some kids Mm -hmm. hold their breath. Mm -hmm. Some kids scream Mm -hmm. and cry and kick and other kids throw things. Yeah. So Sawyer hasn't started. I mean, she doesn't necessarily throw it across the room, but she has started doing like a, like a really aggressive mic drop (laughs) with whatever she's (laughs) holding. Like I throw it on the ground, Yep. (laughs) but just straight down. And I'm like, Okay, well, yes. mm-hmm. <laughs> that's fine. Well, something that I've started doing with Forrest is, hey, you're mad. Yeah. You're allowed to be mad. You're not allowed to throw things. Yep. You're not allowed to break our stuff. Yeah. I work really hard to make sure that we can have fun things in the house. And when you're upset, you take it out on stuff that then you don't get to play with after. Yeah. So if you're feeling upset and you feel like you want to throw something, Let's go throw something. Yeah. And at first, he was like, sure, I'll throw something. And then he continued to throw stuff he wasn't supposed to throw. But yeah. now, yeah, because it, you can it say takes that. time. And also, kids aren't going to understand. You said that yes. in a way that, like, kids are not going to be like, oh, got it. Sure. Because they're three. But you have to do it over and over again. Yeah. You, are hey. the co- you are the constant. Let's be go the constant. This. Yeah. So every time he did it, I would say that. And when you have to repeat yourself in that way, it almost feels like they're not listening. And it's like, no, but they're learning. Yeah. How many times did you have to practice driving before you felt confident to do it enough on your own and you did it without even thinking? Right. So now it's happened so much that when he starts to pick something up, I'll look at him and say, hey, buddy, are you feeling like you need to throw something? Mm-hmm. And he goes, let's play catch. Yeah, there you go. So then he goes and he gets a ball and then we play catch Yep. or we roll it. And so like he's learning to regulate not every time and not with everything, but like it's a process. It's a process. And I could just be like, I bought you that toy. Or if if you're going to treat it that way, you don't get anything. Yeah. I'm taking it all away. I'll give you something to be upset about. But then what lesson did that teach him? Nothing. Now he's just going to internalize that anger, shove it way down. And then guess what? That, do you think it's going to come ho- out in a healthy way right. when he's an adult? What I learned Probably here not. is that I'm bad and that y- because you are bigger than me, you have control over me and you can tell me what I can and can't have mm-hmm. and how I can and can't feel. Yeah. Interesting. Well, okay. Also, I just want to say, because I'm sure people are rolling their eyes and like, oh, so boxy. But like truly, again, I'm not saying that we have all the right answers. No. Or This is just, we're just speaking about why we do the things we do. And um, also what we've learned in parenting, because all parenting is different. And truly, it does connect with this because in in situations with these family systems and how um, generational, like at some point you have to do something different. Yeah, you do. Well, okay. so this do I know if our way is going to work? I fucking don't. I won't know that until my kids are in therapy, but it is different. (laughs) It's a different thing. Emotional differentiation involves observing our emotions without reacting to them, fostering healthier and more balanced relationships from that then. Okay, so we're going to move on to number two, which is triangles and triangulation. Yes. Bowen's theory explores the concept of triangles, which occur when tension arises between two individuals and then a third person is drawn in to alleviate the conflict. Triangulation can complicate relationships and perpetuate unhealthy dynamics. Understanding how triangles manifest and learning to navigate them with emotional intelligence can lead to a more balanced and harmonious connection. Mm -hmm. So, example. Triangles are fucking hard. Yeah. Here's an example. So, here they give um, an instance of a married couple who's experiencing tension in their relationship. Instead of addressing their issues directly with each other, they involve a third person like their child, potentially. Better not be. <laughs> Sharing <laughs> Unfortunately, their... it usually is. It usually is. Sharing their grievances and seeking comfort. This is an example of a triangle where the child is now drawn into the couple's conflict, effectively reducing the tension between the couple. Uh-huh. 
which shouldn't be their job. Uh huh. <laughs> this is known as triangulation. However, such a scenario can then cause emotional distress to the child who now may feel burdened by their parents' conflict and feel like it's on them to resolve it. You don't say. Mm -hmm. And it can also prevent the couple from resol resolving their issues directly, perpetuating unhealthy <laughs> dynamics within the family. You don't say. Isn't it wild how that works? That's interesting. Same. I've never heard of that before, but I saw it on TV. No, me too, me too. <laughs> <laughs> that was an episode of Full House, I think. Yeah, Certainly yeah, yeah. nothing I've ever had to deal with. Yeah. Recognizing and disengaging from such triangulation can then contribute to healthier and more open communication in relationships. So what I think is probably stop involving your kids yes. in your troubles. There has been, again, not that I've been guilty of it, but I know that me and Corey have had arguments in mm -hmm. front of Noah. And then I know what you're are you going to bring up what you said to Noah the other day? What that is not on what did I say directly? Because I can't remember exactly what it was. What, I told you right after it happened, but what you said is Corey this literally just happened. Corey apologized to Noah for yes. for not being able to regulate his feelings and kind of because, projecting. Yeah, he had an uh, an anxiety moment and he was just kind of also hungry. Uh -huh. <laughs> so he was kind of just being more hangry. more hangry than he needed to be. And he was saying things that did need to be taken care of but maybe he said it in a tone that i was like hey well and this is what i told him because i stepped in and i was like hey your lesson is getting lost in your in your uh message delivery delivery yep so let's fix the delivery because i promise you the way you, that you're delivering the message that tone he's not hearing what you're trying to say yes he's just thinking oh you're mad at me right and i'm not saying what you have to say is it meaningful again it was but you regulate your emotions yes. sorry i didn't mean to throw Corey under the bus but again That's this not, is a very it, it's a human thing it's i was a gonna human say thing. if you sit sitting out there and you're like wow sounds like Corey's toxic I have children. I don't know because <laughs> literally it's no, going to that's happen. that's a normal thing. You're a normal, that's, yeah. I mean, you gave a similar example with Noah getting frustrated with his math. Yeah. And taking it out on Sawyer saying like, yeah. stop climbing on that. Should she not have been climbing? Maybe. Yeah. But I like, think it, <laughs> arguably that probably would be a safe thing to tell someone climbing on something. Right. But, but he did it because he was like, I'm mad right now and I'd like to take this madness yes. out on someone. Yes. So when that happened, obviously Corey heard what I said. Yes. Was like, you're right. Damn. Gonna check myself for a minute. Apologize to Noah. Mm -hmm. And then Noah looked at me. He was like, are you going to apologize to Corey then? <laughs> I was like, hey, hey. <laughs> First of all, because I will say when I told him, I was maybe using a tone that was like, yes. hey, snap out of it, mister. I was yep. using my mom voice. I'm not going to lie to you because it needed to be used because yeah. he was... <laughs> That Whatever. was the level of the room. <laughs> it's true. And so when that happened, then Noah was like, hey, but you kind of had a tone with him. And I yep. was like, th you know what? Yes. And I will get around. To <laughs> You're not wrong. But also, this is not your your conflict to resolve. Yes. And I don't know if this. You also that's told not me. something he does often. Right. And you said, you said. um And you can tell me if you want me to take this out, but I feel like you're not going to care. But yeah. you told me that you said. I want you to know that whether you see us resolve it or not, or you see us apologize or not, Bingo. that we do. That yes. is important to us. That you don't is have, what I said. It doesn't have to be something that you worry about. Yes. That is what I said. Yeah. Um, and then he was like, cool, I'm going to go to my room. And I was like, see you later. <laughs> like, <laughs> Put on your playlist, clean it or something. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Like, and that was it. It didn't have to be a big thing, but it was, it was nice that he was like, I don't know. I feel happy that he felt comfortable enough to call you out. To call me out and that he saw me call him out and that it was always like there wasn't ever a nobody was bad in the situation because yes. I was just like, hey, I I hear you and I know that you're hungry and that you are anxious right now because maybe like the house yeah. was messy. And he was also trying to cook. Corey's not a cook. So, <laughs> like, cooking can be very um, stressful. Yeah, if you don't do it often. And there's true. a lot going true, on. True, true. And so I think that there was a lot happening there. So me calling that out and then also Noah being like, well, but also I think that you were feeling triggered by that. So yes, <laughs> maybe, hey, maybe hey, hey, you, you don't need apologize. to apologize. This is a big, big adult thing. Okay, thank you. But no, thank you. But it's it's going to happen. That's the thing that I also want to say. If you if your kids are like getting involved with it, that doesn't automatically mean that you're bringing them into it. I think the kids will see 
stuff like that and automatically almost feel like a need to well for peace to happen and feel like I can I can help with this because well, yeah. you guys both like me and you listen to me. <laughs> right now, it seems like maybe you don't like each other. <laughs> maybe you don't like each other. So I think in those moments, maybe reinforcing that you do like hey. each other. <laughs> yeah, but I also feel like the Noah's Noah's going to be twelve. Yeah, so he's getting older. You, as it, uh, how did I want to say this? As important as it is for them to know that they don't have to keep the peace or be responsible for helping the two of you navigate conflict. Yeah. It is important for them to see healthy conflict and healthy that, resolution. That part. So yes, it's exactly because that. he is going to have conflict of his own. Exactly. And I think him hearing like, you know what? Maybe apologizing doesn't have to be a performance. And yes. maybe it doesn't have to be yes. done in a specific way. Um because there are parts of communication that sometimes get lost in just the monotony of them, just yeah. like the like apologizing or saying I love you or like sometimes the it everything less, it gets lessened. Yes, mm -hmm. and I think acknowledging forcing someone to say I'm sorry, like forcing yes. a kid to apologize. Like I'm not going to apologize if I don't want to apologize and, and I'm not sorry. Like I, yeah. If I'm not, uh, yes. But I'm I, also not going to do it when you think that I should either just because you tell me I should. Because here's what that, all that's doing is you'll make people happy if you apologize, but then you don't have to do anything. Yep. Don't have to change your behavior. And guess what? Then those kids grow up and they say sorry as a way to diffuse the situation mm -hmm. and not actually feel sorry yes so if you don't feel that way progress you're not going to change what you did and then it just becomes yes that okay the next one is multi-generational transmission process which i think is pretty easy so we can fly through this one pretty quickly that sounds like learning stick shift in a car <laughs> oh, <laughs> a lot good. of car language it's transmission. <laughs> yeah um i think it's because well essentially what it means it's it highlights how behavior patterns emotional reactivity and relationship dynamics are passed down through generations yes. basically what we've been talking about this whole time if you see it then you're going to repeat kids it. learn mirror neurons kids yes. are learning by what they're seeing so if things are done in a certain way that's what all they're gonna know and you don't know what you don't know exactly and because um i would say the millennial generation is the first generation that really had access to outside knowledge yes outside of our homes we could be like oh shit this, this is actually how you so do how it. would you know exactly that everybody wasn't doing it that way i think a lot of kids even in like divorced households were like oh not every family is split up or vice versa yeah. like if you didn't have parents who were split up you'd be like oh what do you mean your parents don't live in the same house uh -huh. like or what do you mean you live with your grandparents it's like if you don't have access and that's why this is a pivot to a different soapbox that's why representation in media is so important yes. because there are so many different and it's not just yes obviously the most important thing is to see someone who looks like you and a, a system that is similar to yours reflected in media so that you can feel comfort in knowing that you're not alone but also it desensitizes other people to the like uh, shock of it yes almost. yes yeah. like yeah. acknowledging that that's there that's why i have books that are not catered to boys. Yeah. I have a book that's called She Persists and I read it to my boys about, and it starts, being a girl is tough sometimes. Yes. Because guess what? <laughs> it, it is. is. That's just you don't have to be a girl in order to know that. To acknowledge it. That's important to show. And again, I think because generationally, they didn't have access to this stuff. It was just yeah. like, okay, monkey see, monkey do. Yes. Then that's how we get where we're at yes <laughs> yeah exactly um by recognizing and understanding these patterns individuals can break free from unhealthy cycles and can create healthier relationship dynamics for themselves and then for their future generations which i think is the goal yes it's not going to be boom we did it it's obviously gonna take time and work but trial and that's error the goal yes that is the goal so an example of this would be, they say, let's consider the Smith family where the grandfather was known for his quick temper and impulsivity. Okay. 
If you guys hear my stomach, I'm so sorry. It's me too. I'm hungry as fuck. Okay. <laughs> this behavior Ravenous. pattern was then seen in his son, who often reacted impulsively during stressful situations because that's what he saw. Mm -hmm. And now the grandson, Jack, seems to exhibit these similar behaviors. However, Jack, so Jack appears to have inherited these behavioral tendencies despite he never met his grandfather. Yep. Okay. But now he is he's ha experiencing these things. Yes. In that way. So. This illustrates the importance of why recognizing those patterns can help in breaking the cycle and then foster healthier coping yes. mechanisms and behavioral res responses. Because a lot of what we do uh, with our children, there's some that is, you know, just like a, on a genetic level with how they are. Mm -hmm. But a lot of it is society and a lot of it is family systems. Yes. They're, they're going to... And I think react to what they know and see. I think it's important to acknowledge those things as well when and if you do confront people about how you are planning to break cycles or make changes or set boundaries because if you don't it can just again your message could get lost mm -hmm. and it could just sound like you're saying you were a bad dad to me yeah you were a bad mom to me yeah and I don't need to look any further than that you know, that's why I hate when certain things happen on anywhere on the internet and people immediately just go to like, you're a piece of shit for uh -huh. it. Because I think it's so like, realistically, who's listening to that and changing? Right. You're No one. Immediately, all you're doing is you're making that person either get defensive mm -hmm. or they don't, they don't care anymore. Right. They're like, meh, fuck what you have to say. Right. You don't know me. Kind of a thing. Right. But- and not that anybody owes anybody their time and, no, and it's, effort it's, and education. Yeah. But if you, there's a way to maybe, you know, understand that this person might be this way because they didn't know any better. Or this person might be doing this thing because they didn't know any better. And if you provide that, sure, there's a possibility that they're going to continue right. willfully being ignorant. But there could also be an aha moment that happens. Yes. And that's the goal. And again, that's why we... Share so many of yeah. our our oh I'm not gonna be the shamey person blamey that's, moments that's gonna yeah I I won't be like oh we're just gonna delete this and it never happened from the internet yes. that's not how life works and it will re re uh, surface that's it and I d I would never want if I'm not willing to own my shit how can I ever expect somebody else to own their shit exactly and if I am willing to do so in a way where I'm not going to shame myself and I am just going to be like, you know what? I'm going to take accountability. I'm going to acknowledge this. Moment. I'm going to learn. Thanks. I'm going to grow. I have seen how effective that is yes. for other people. Yep. And so like you were saying that it bothers you when people um, will just talk about like call someone out basically saying they're a piece of shit. Yeah. Um, and this is like nuanced. This is not just Super like nuanced. bigoted people or something. Like if you're yeah, fighting with people on the not internet. What, there are people out there that just are pieces of shit. Yeah. <laughs> not who I'm talking about. Yeah, that's not what we're talking about. But I think that if you're not willing to take the time, and you don't have to, mm -hmm. to educate them and like bring awareness to that situation, then maybe you also don't have the time and energy to call them a piece of shit in the first yeah. place. You know what I mean? Yep. I think you can protect your peace without throwing that the shame the, because it's like at that them? point what's getting done right Wh who's benefiting right what what progress do you feel has better? been made that do you feel better i always say do you feel better yeah because i feel like nothing positive happened here right and that's another reason why i'm not going to get on here and call people out there's no. been so many people in my life who are terrified of the fact that i have a microphone and i'm like what good is that what, what do why you think would i do? do that why would i do that in what way would that benefit my life at all it wouldn't that's the same reason why you don't name your abuser no nope, it's and the I same won't. reason like we don't we don't go into that stuff because what good would it do no it wouldn't. If anything, we spend a lot of time acknowledging the fact that our abusers came from XYZ mm -hmm. situation. They are the way they are because XYZ. Mm -hmm. I don't need Not to- Not an excuse. That doesn't mean that I need to be around it or a part you of it. You don't get access to me. However, I'm not going to stoop down to that level because he's down there. Right. Because why, why? who would that benefit? Right. Part of me is like, are we getting so off topic that it doesn't have to do with it? But I feel like I'll <laughs> listen to it back and be like, okay, I get it. Yeah. This is tangents. So it makes sense if we do derail completely. But <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, I only have one more too. Yeah. So we, we can't derail. This is fucking a big one and it might hit some people hard. And so I apologize. Get your pillow. 
You just looked at me like it's going to hit me hard. Well, you and I, because this is the role of anxiety. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anxiety is a critical component of Bowen family systems theory as it impacts how individuals interact within their relationships. Bowen suggests that managing anxiety is crucial for maintaining healthy emotional boundaries and promoting differentiation. By examining and understanding the underlying anxieties within the family system, individuals can minimize emotional reactivity and respond more effectively to relationship challenges. So here's uh, the the um, example they give. Let's say Mary, a single okay. mother of two who constantly feels overwhelmed and anxious about her ability to provide for her family. This is why I'm saying to everybody, this does not mean you're a piece of shit because I was this person. Her anxiety about not being able to provide as a single mother seeps into her relationships with her children, which mm. causes her to hover over them and micromanage their lives. This overbearing behavior stems from her deep-seated fears of failure and losing control. She often reacts in an emotionally intense manner to minor inconveniences, fostering a tense and anxious home environment. This scenario illustrates how anxiety can influence relationships within a family system and trigger emotional reactivity. Recognizing this anxiety-driven behavior is the first step to managing it, promoting healthier emotional boundaries, and fostering a more balanced family dynamic. So essentially, what that means is I can understand why Mary is doing what she's doing. However, that doesn't mean it's okay. Well, and what's bizarre about that situation is like Mary's so afraid of being a bad mom that she's I don't want to say she's being a bad mom, but like like if I'm going to just she use is, really like simple terms. Yes. She's so afraid of failing her kids that she's failing her kids. Accidentally by Yes. yes. But you know, and uh, again, this could be because she doesn't recognize it or have the tools, but if yeah. you feel those feelings, number 1 is working on yourself. Yeah. It should always be what can I do to foster these relationships? Now, it just sometimes sounds... there are relationships that cannot be fostered, mm. and in that case, fuck cut it off. You yeah. know yourself and your life better than I do. Don't let what I'm saying mm -hmm. ha make you feel any sort of yes. icky negative feelings. I'm not trying to do that. I'm just saying Right. that sometimes I think we can hear that and and have a person that we've lived with experience those things. Yep. I understand. I grew up very much near watching TV. Very much <laughs> very much near the television where this was happening <laughs> frequently. And I understood that that person had those issues. Mm -hmm. However, it was so negatively uh, affecting my life yep. that I, when I got away, I got the fuck away. And right. now there feels like a, a definite distance there mm -hmm. um, where there doesn't need to be, maybe. But at the same time, I'm like, neither it's one of us than know how to know how to not. Yes. Right. So. And I feel like I don't. I feel guilty about how I said Mary was a bad mom or Mary was failing her kids because Mary is ambiguous. But what I mean by that is it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. That's that's yeah, it is. I am. I don't want to not be able to give these children everything, which is which is obviously what a parent wants. Yes. You're a good mother for that. Yes. But not being able to manage the fear that you have. You got to put your mask on first. Before you can put your mask on your babies. Yes. You have to. Mask up. COVID is out here still. <laughs> that's what we know. Yeah. I think that's that's really all I have for you. Uh, it, again, not to make anybody feel any kind of shame or, or anything. I hope no one does. Because if you, if you are noticing these things, I implore you to, instead of feeling like I'm bad, use this as a moment of self-discovery. I just downloaded an app called CoStar, okay? Not sponsored, mm -hmm. but it is an astrology app. <laughs> I just thought it would be fun. I, I really like astrology uh -huh. things recently. Um, and I just think it's fun. Anyways, while I was putting in all my information, birth date and all the yep. such, um, it was like a thing popped up basically saying to approve or deny getting notifications. However, it worded in a way that was like, are we like, do you approve us basically calling you out? So it'll <laughs> pop up at some moment and be like, hey, your Mars is in wherever. You're in your head. You're in your own head. <laughs> Snap out of it. Yeah. 
own your power whatever it just, that would like, honestly freak me out a little I fucking bit love it okay because it is something that i think this year i really want to do is just like acknowledge i don't i want to be a better version of myself and and part of that is realizing that i'm not the best <laughs> version of myself Heard. now Heard. you know what i mean yes so, and that is not an easy thing to do I, I wanted to say that like i am mary I was Mary. I was Mary. I mean, too. I'm Mary. No, I. I'm Jerry. I'm <laughs> Jerry Mary. <laughs> no, honestly, I was Mary, and I think I probably still have some of Mary inside me. Yeah, inside, inside of me. me. <laughs> uh, I remember when I had Forrest, and I was watching Manny. Mm-hmm. That there was a time I was losing my mind mm-hmm. because I felt like I was failing. Yeah. All three of these kids. One of them wasn't even mine. Yep. I felt like. I am creating a really unhealthy dynamic for them because I feel overwhelmed and I know that they're going to feel that I'm overwhelmed yes. and they're going to feel like a burden and I don't want them to feel like a burden. There was a time where I hid by the, behind the couch and I was just crying mm-hmm. because I couldn't handle it. And Ollie came over to me. He's freaking just turned two years old and he's like, mommy, why are you crying? Mm-hmm. And I... I remember being like, I cannot do this anymore. I can't do this anymore. And I I had already started therapy at that point. But even when I started therapy, the reason was because I was so anxious and overwhelmed and feeling like, I don't know. I'm so afraid I'm going to fuck things up that I feel like I'm fucking them up. Yes. And so I, I just wanted to say that, like, I'm not I don't. I don't want to speak on this ambiguous Mary person without acknowledging that like I feel it because I've been it and I I recognize it when I fall back in it and focus on prioritizing myself because it's not selfish. It's It's, important. It is very important. It's important to make sure I don't hold so tightly that I break it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. Well, that's all I have for you today and Thank everybody you so much. i hope that i hope that i'm sorry <laughs> is all i have to say but hey also, let us know if you uh, let us know if you guys also watch tv growing yeah, up yeah did you and, guys have uh, tvs in your bedroom growing <laughs> up did you see the things we were talking about <laughs> yeah did you guys watch those tv shows too let us know yeah um and also if you have time you know go to patreon.com slash ladies and tangents and come visit us or we're gonna be there on friday if you guys uh aren't in florida and you're cold wherever you are fly to florida and you can we'll come go, and see us we'll, We'll go I actually you. don't even know what the ticket counts are in Florida, but someone was like, hey, why don't you push those Florida shows? And I was like, all right. All right. All right. Sorry. Hard. Sorry. <laughs> so. We've done so much Florida slander that they're like, bet. Yeah. Florida, I love you. Talk to a room of no one, you motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> Florida, I love you, but also I'd love to see you. Yeah. That's what I'm let saying. Us, let us come see you. <laughs> yep. And we'll see the rest of you next Tuesday. Thanks so much for hanging out. And uh, we love you so much. We'll see you next week. All right. We're out. (laughs) Bye.